about just keeping it down now? I'm sorry. What? Yes, yes, yes. The 2024 Ford Mustang is a cool car with a lot of cool tricks. That's also soon going to be one of a kind in more ways than one. Since the Dodge Challenger and the Chevrolet Camaro are going out of production next year, this will be the only American pony car you can get with a V8 engine. And the only ragtop American convertible car on sale. The Chevrolet Corvette convertible is a retractable hardtop. And other than that, if you want an American vehicle without a top, you got to go get a Bronco or a Jeep Wrangler. Ford has declared this the seventh generation Mustang, but it really is more of an evolution of the sixth generation car it replaces. Along with the V8, you can also get it with a turbocharged four cylinder, and both are available in the convertible style. Although the V8 convertible only comes in the top GT premium trim, which starts around $54,000. This particular car has a few options that adds about 10 grand to that price, including a computer controlled Magna Ride suspension system and the GT Performance Package, a shock tower brace over the engine, and a K brace for the chassis underneath it. The V8 is rated at 480 horsepower and 418 pound-feet of torque, but this also has an active exhaust system that gives you an extra six horses. One thing that's changed a lot in the seventh generation Mustang is the dashboard, which now features dual digital displays all under one big frame in this particular model. It's a big departure from Mustang's past, which always had sort of a retro theme, and it's powered by the Unreal Engine, which is used for a lot of video games and the digital sets they shoot the Mandalorian on. It does have one throwback feature I like a lot, however. Along with the various cluster designs that go with the different drive modes, there's one designed to look like the gauge cluster from the Fox Body Mustangs from 1987 to 1993. And for someone who owned an 89 Mustang, it's like hanging out with an old friend. This model also comes with a bunch of performance enhancements, including a bunch of track apps that have acceleration timers, brake performance, G meters, auxiliary gauges, and a feature that it needs to be running for to engage. It's called the line lock, which automatically just applies the front brakes so you can do a burnout while you're sitting in place at a drag strip or another track. And there's another neat way to help you burn rubber. This might look like a mechanical handbrake, but it is just an electronic switch. When you have it normally, you pull it up, that engages the parking brake, then you push it down to disengage. But you could turn it into a drift brake, and now when you pull it up and hold it, it will apply the brake just like one in a drift car or a rally car, and then when you let go, it releases them. A convertible is not really the right car to be doing any of that kind of stuff in, but then again, why not? As far as my six foot one scooch test is concerned, yeah, there is no chance I'm fitting in the back seat with the front seat set comfortably for me, but let's see what we can do. This does have power seats, which I'm gonna let it slide up a little bit for me to a point where I actually can fit back there, but let's see what it's like for me driving first. <clears throat> yeah, that's not a lot of fun. Certainly not the kind of freewheeling you like to do in a Mustang, but, could technically drive it and at that point I could squeeze back here although I'm not sure how well this would go if I had the roof up. Uh, it does have these nifty hooks on the backs of the headrest though that you can use for a jacket and this has a surprisingly large trunk but otherwise you probably want to treat it like a two-seater most of the time. Which brings me to the Caffeina cup and bottle holder count brought to you by Caffeina caffeinated water. Giddy up! So the Mustang has two cup holders for the front seats. Oh, no, that's it. Caffeina! Buy it on Amazon using the link in the description below. Juvenile delinquency like the drift brake aside, the Mustang is the most refined of the pony cars, which I guess makes sense since it is officially the elder statesman. Definitely feels like what a $50,000 car should feel like today, and that is a good thing because along with being popular in the United States, Ford sells a lot of these in Germany, where the V8 goes up against cars like BMWs and Mercedes-Benz. In fact, this is the best-selling sports car in the world, according to Ford, based on some metric or another. 
I'd actually be a little too fancy for a Mustang. I'm not entirely sold on the digital dashboard. I prefer the old analog gauges, which is probably why I like that Fox body screen. It's also a little tough for me to reach with the seat back here, which is a problem because aside from the volume knob, everything else is controlled on the screen, including the climate control. So you do use it a lot. By the way, you may have noticed this American cars and racing hat, but did you notice that American flag down in the corner? Well, if you click on that, you can subscribe to the American Cars and Racing channel. Maybe we'll start selling hats. As you might imagine, the convertible isn't quite as sporty as the coupe. The suspension's a little softer, and there's a little bit of chassis flags, but nothing too crazy. It's actually quite good. It also comes with the benefit of letting you enjoy the sound system better when you turn up the volume on the exhaust. <laughs> I'm sure the turbocharged four-cylinder, which has over 300 horsepower, is great, but it cannot be this great. When you're driving a car like this, on a road like this, on a day like this, it's impossible to understand why more people don't buy cars like this. Which is why they don't make them anymore. Unlike Dodge, which is replacing the V8 Challengers with an electric car, and Chevrolet, which hasn't even said what it's replacing the Camaro with yet, Ford is committed to selling V8 Mustangs for years to come, probably until the end of the decade. And it has a new way to let everybody know what yours has under the hood. Now, you may remember that mysterious occurrence from the beginning of this video. Well, the Mustang GT with the automatic has a remote starter, but you can also use it to rev the engine remotely. It's a whole new way to annoy your neighbors and you don't even have to be there. In fact, it's probably better if you are. 